Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bo Lee Zhou from MIT. So today I will talk about our research work on network dissection, quantifying interpretability of deep visual representation. This is joint work with Debbie Bao, Aditya Kusla, Odi Oliva, and Antonio Toraba, all from MIT. So this talk is not about proposing fancy network like uh, DenseNet this morning. This, this work is more about we conduct uh, empirical study on common properties for neural network, the network interpretability. So over the years, deep common net have been widely used in computer vision, especially for visual recognition. People design and propose deeper network to get be better performers. From 2012, AlexNet with five common layers to VGG with 16 common layers, to GoogleNet with 22 common layers, to recently the residual network with more than 100 common layers. People propose those deeper networks to get better performers. But as you know, deep learning is more like a representation learning. The final output is just one part of the story. Another part of the story are the internal representations. Here are the two central questions we explore in our work. What have been learned inside those different architectures? Or, and how to compare the internal representations across those different architectures? To understand what's going on inside neural network, there are some previous work on network visualization. For example, the deconvolution is to used to visualize the individual units. This shows that those units at the lower layer, like layer two, are detecting texture or surface. Those units at the higher layer, like layer five, are detecting dog head or bicycle wheels, those more semantic meaningful concepts. Back propagation is also used to visualize the internal representation. The back, back projects are nearly the weights back into image space, then they can show what have been learned inside. The back propagation is further used to modify the given image to another pattern. Top activated images is another way to visualize the figurate patterns by each unit. Here, each row shows the figurate images by each unit. Those visualizations are great. They give you the intuition what have been learned inside. But given the visualization of two units from different net network, how to compare them quantitatively is still unsolved the issue. Here, our goal is going from qualitative visualization to quantitative interpretation. So given any network weights, we can fit in a lot of image. Then we get, get the top activated images for each one of the units. So here are the top activated images for one unit. We segment those in images using the feature map of that unit. Here are the top activated images for another unit. So from the visual inspection, you see the first unit seems detecting a lamp. The second one detects a car, but confused with some other pattern like bird hats. Ideally, we want to automatically give an interpretation for each one of the unit. For example, the interpretation for the first unit is lamp. The interpretation for the second unit is car. We also want to associate confidence score to measure how accurate those units detect those patterns. So how can we go from qualitative visualization to quantitative interpretation? Our approach is simple. We consider each unit as a concept detector. Then we evaluate each unit for semantic segmentation. Giving those top activated images for one unit, we use a feature map to segment those images and get the most uh, activated image regions. Let's assume we have pixel-wide annotation for each of those images. We can further use the feature map to segment the se semantic segmentation mask. Then we can simply count how many ground truth pixels have been correctly segmented. Then we can associate the label for each one of the units. Here, the lamp pixels are highly segmented. Here, we to evaluate the accuracy of semantic segmentation, we use intersection over union. Therefore, we have network dissection. Network dissection is a general framework to quantify the interpretability of units through se semantic segmentation. Given any network weight, we chop off the fully kind layer. Then we fit in a lot of images with pixelized annotation from those low-level concepts like color, texture, to high-level concepts like uh, object, parts, and scenes. Here is a particular case. We fit in images, then we segment the concept of blue, fabric, door, grass, person, car. Then we associate each one of the units with the most confident label. 
to t collect a pixel-wide annotation data set. We build up this broadly and densely annotated data set, shorted as broadened data set. We pull concept of scene, object, parts from the ADE, Pascal context, Pascal part data sets. We further pull the middle level and the low level concept, such as materials, texture, from open surface and describable textures. We generate the color concept by ourselves. Totally, there are 60,000 images with more than 1,100 visual concepts included in our data set. So after we have the metal and data set, we first evaluate the network dissection on the baseline model. So the baseline model here is the AlexNet trained down places for scene recognition. So this network will tell the scene categories of the given image, whether it's a living room, kitchen, or coast. So we apply the network dissection to the confined layers of the baseline model. So there are 256 units at the camera file layer. So here is the histogram of object de detectors discovered by our methods. Out of those 256 units, there are totally 81 object detectors. The most frequent detector is a water detector, then is a grass, then is a tree. So there are totally 40 unique object detectors. Here we show some example object detectors. Here is a unit 70 line. The interpretation given by our method is car. The IOU is port 13. So this is a car detector. So here is another unit, unit 107. The interpretation is rope. So from the IOU, you see this seems pretty low compared to those supervised trained object detector. But I should emphasize that those units just intermediate convolution kernels that they just emerge by themselves without any explicit object supervision. Here we show another two units detecting the same concept. The unit 144 and the unit 200, they detect the same concept mountain, but they detect uh, different kinds of mountain. The first one detects the grassy mountain, second one detects uh, the slowy mountain. This may explain why the IOU is low, because each unit detects the fine grained attributes of the same concept. Here is a network uh, dissection report generated by our method for the baseline model. So it cannot only generate the object detectors. It also can identify other concept detectors, like the part detector, scene detector, and texture detectors. Here, we can further summarize those histograms into this one bar. So this bar shows the number of unique detectors across those high-level concepts, like object parts, to low-level, middle-level concept materials, texture, color. Let's apply the network dissection to other architectures, such as VGG, Google Net, Residual Network, supervised trained down image nets for object classification, and trained down places for scene classification. We also evaluate the network dissection on those networks trained from self-supervision, that people train network without using image annotations. Here are the results. So here we show the AlexNet trained down image net and the trained down places. The bar on the right is the, is the same bar in the previous slide. It shows the network trained down places. The bar on the left shows the uh, AlexNet trained down image net. So you can see they have similar number of text detectors, but there are more object detectors in AlexNet trained down places. We further include uh, those turns network from self-supervised learning. The, those networks share the same architecture AlexNet, but you can see the number of unique detectors change across those supervision and signals. So network dissection can discover those interpretable units across those different architecture, uh, different supervision. We further include the VGG and the Google Net and the residual network. So you can see there are much more interpretable units in those deeper network. Here we further show some sample unit detectors across, across those four ne network architectures. Here is a house detector in AlexNet, in VGG, in Google Net, in residual network. So you can see the IOU for each one of the detectors keep increase when you have deeper network. Also, the uh, house detector in residual network can detect more compact house compared to the house detector in AlexNet. Here we show another concept, the airplane detector in AlexNet, in VGG, in Google Net, and uh, in residual network. Compared to the airplane detector in AlexNet, the uh, airplane detector in residual network can handle the change of skills or even some occlusion case. 
We further can apply the network dissection to analyze some interesting phenomenons happening inside the network. Here we apply network to analyze the emergency of interpretable units during the training. Here I will show you a video. The horizontal axis are training iterations. The vertical axis are number of unique detectors. I will play the video. So that the training iteration going, you can see there are more number of unique detectors emerge across the training process. So it go along with the accuracy on the validation sets. Therefore, our network dissection provides a tool to help you debug your training process. We further apply this method to analyze how unit changed in transfer learning scenario. Let's say we have a AlexNet pre-train model on ImageNet. Then we fine tuning that to places. Then we want to see the individual unit change from one data source to another data source. So at the beginning of the fine tuning, this unit is a dog detector. Then we fine tuning this network to places. Let's see how this unit change. So you see over the fine tuning iteration goes up. The unit converge to another concept from a dog to a waterfall detector. So those two concepts are different, but they share some low-level similarities, like they are detecting the black and white stripes. Here we sh show another unit at the beginning of the fine tuning. This is a green detector. So after fine tuning, this unit converges as a baseball field detector. So compared to this concept before fine tuning, they also share some low-level similarities at detecting those green patterns. Here we do another wheel around. Let's see, we have AlexNet trained down places. Then we fine tuning this network to ImageNet and see how those units change. So here is the unit detecting the waterfall at the beginning of the fine tuning. Then we fine tuning to ImageNet. Then gradually it changed from a water fall into a dog detector, because there are so many dog categories in ImageNet. So this is before fine tuning; it's a waterfall detector. So here is another unit. So at the beginning of a fine tuning, this is a stripe detector. So we fine tuning this to ImageNet. So after fine tuning, this stripe detector converged to a dog ear detector. Because there are so many dog category in ImageNet, those units need to spend their capacity to represent the parts of a dog. So before fine tuning, this is um, more like a stripe detector. This share those geometric similarity. So here is a conclusion. Previously, camera net is considered as a black box. You throw images inside, they give you the prediction. Here we have the network dissection. It's a toolkit to review the interpretability of any, any given network. Then you can throw common net inside this network dissection. It will generate the dissection report and help you identify this interpretable unit. We release all the codes and the more visualization on our project page. So welcome to our post session this afternoon. Thank you. Um. We have time for a question. Uh, there are Microsoft microphones there and there. Oh, there is a question over there. Hi, uh, that's nice work. I was wondering about units that didn't really have a unanimous kind of decision on what they were detecting. Can you comment on like what you found about units that maybe were were not detecting individual parts, but were just like yeah. So, so there are one third of units detecting meaningful concepts. Uh, so the other half may they, they may do some distributed coding or their concept is not in our dictionary. Like our dictionary have eleven hundred concepts, but some concept may outside of uh, the the concept of our di dictionary, so right, you may so not detect it. I guess I'm wondering if they're encoding something like pose or something else. Would you have a way of tweezing this out? In the, in the yes, system? there are some pose detector or shape detector that we don't have annotation. So in future we work, we want to annotate more those concepts so we can enrich our dictionary.